Hi my lovelies! I'm Ellie Trier and you're watching Zuzu's House of Cats, the show where I take you behind the scenes of my life as a professional artist. And today I've got some packages to just hit myself in the face with. I've got some packages to share with you. I've had a bunch of art materials come in, I've got some stuff that I got for Christmas and I'd like to try and play with. So I've got some art supplies, we'll do a little bit of swatching. I love to swatch. And I'll kind of talk you through stuff and, and show you what I'm doing. So, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we've got here is an order from Jackson's. Get rid of this packaging. And this is a very exciting package. This is a new purchase for me, uh, the Liquitex acrylic marker. I, I use Posca's quite a lot in my work and I think I have, I can't remember if it's a Molito or a, a Montana um, acrylic marker. I like acrylic markers generally but I've never used the Liquitex ones and I really, I've seen other people use them, Emma Carlyle for example and Sandy Hester and there's something about the quality of the marks they make especially as they start to kind of dry out that really excites me so i thought i would just pick one up and give it a go and see if i like it prussian blue is one of my favorite favorite colors so i got this and i'll have a look at it put that there. okay this is what i'm really excited about this i think is all neo color now if you don't know about Neo Color. They are a sort of wax pastel. They're basically like grown up crayons for artists. <laughs> and I bought a small set about a year ago and I've just gradually been adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. And they've become possibly my favorite art material. So let's just move this out of the way so you can see things properly. So yeah, so they've become one of my absolute favorite art materials and I've been gradually adding to it and I think this is the final pieces that I don't have yet. So I've got a little handful of just colors that were missing from my collection. And that's it, I now have, well the rest of them here, I now have the full set, which is kept very messily in this box. And they're the thing that I reach for probably most often I use them in my final artwork for sketching out a design you know initially on a canvas I use them for like details on a canvas I've got some examples here to show you so they're great for like super quick like on the go sketches they're really great just to like scribble down shapes I use them for let's see here I use them for texture in mixed media work. So they make these really lovely, this paper is slightly rough. And they make these really kind of lovely rough textures. Bring that up so you can see it. I've got a couple more examples in here. Uh, I guess here, it's painting just for the hair. It just brings a new element into the work. And then I also do like whole pieces just in neo color as well. Let's bring this up a little bit. So this is acrylic gouache on the background and then this is all neo color on the fish. Uh, they blend really nicely. They come in two sorts. So I like the neo color twos because they're water soluble. You can also get neo color ones and I think they're a bit less jammy. Like these just go down like crayons. They're lovely. And the neo color ones are a little bit oh, stiffer I suppose on the page. Oh yeah this is just another, this is a whole piece just done in Neo Colour. So you can see the really really sort of jammy, jammy textures like really good oil pastels um, but less sticky and claggy. So I like doing it for that. Also what I like them for is working on coloured paper. Here I have this huge um, sketchbook with black paper. Um, oops. You can see how that the neo color works kind of on the black and you get these lovely vibrant colors um, that, that shine through. Um, yeah. So if you haven't tried them, like I highly recommend them. They are, like I said, my most reached for, especially when I'm sketching or I just want to capture something super quickly. Neo color is the loveliest. 
Um, of course they're water soluble as well so you can do a really quick sketch just while you're out and about and then you can come home and you can use a water brush or something and turn it into a watercolour thing which is lovely, it looks just like watercolour. So that's those. Um, I also, talking about coloured paper, I got this pad of paper for Christmas from my husband. He knows that I love using the new colours on coloured paper and so this is five colours, it's just an A4 mix, 160 grams, so it's nice and thick. I'm looking forward to doing some stuff with the Neo Color on that. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, next thing is, oh, mm, these, I'm so excited about these. I have seen so many people using these and I was incredibly resistant to start with. It's like, I have enough paints. I use, you know, I use acrylic, I use watercolour, I use a, uh, gouache, I use acrylic gouache, like I don't need any more paint. But I saw so many people using these and swatching them and all the different colours and the way that people were talking about them. They're a kind of watercolour gouache hybrid as far as I can make out. So they've got lovely, thick, jammy, opaque colours, but they're also, you can get a really good transparency with them and they work a bit like watercolour as well. So you can kind of... I don't know, they're a hybrid, they're, they're kind of both. So I'm really, really excited to break these out and get swatching. The colours are just gorgeous. You can see all the information there. This is the 140, no, sorry, 48 colour set, which has got such a good range. And I especially like that they have a number of different golds because as far as I'm concerned, you can never have too much gold. So we're starting. Oh, ooh, they're kind of sticky. Oh, that's beautiful. I've used quite a lot of water there, so it's quite transparent, but it looks like you can build the color up quite nicely. That's gorgeous. Uh, what's that? Rose Madder Deep. is carmine they're very similar color they're really lovely they go down on the page beautifully um what's this oh, this is just rose madder Pinky pinky. Uh, what's this? Red. Oh, that's a nice red. Very pinky. This is cadmium red. Oh, that's more orangey. Oh, that's a nice red. Oh, I like these. I like these a lot. We are here. Oh, yes. Oh, these are gorgeous. So that one that I just put down was, that was cadmium scarlet and this is cadmium orange. They're rattly little buggers. Oh, ooh, that's a nice orange. And then this is a cad yellow. This one is called Oreolin. I don't know what that means. It's a pretty colour though. Oh, look at that cad yellow. It's so pure, pure yellow. And we've got this one, which is a lemon yellow. Ooh, punchy. Nice and cool, very bright. This is a greenish yellow, that's nice. Mm. 
Is this interesting? I don't know if this is interesting. I do like to swatch. Oh, that's nice. What's that? Olive green. Yes, like an olive green. Um, then what have we got? Lime green. Woo! Yes, it is. That is some Limington greensicles. Pow. Also very good Barcelona parakeet colour. This is sap green light. That's very bright. I'm looking forward to mixing with these and knocking them back a bit because these are whew, super intense. Oh, there's a little bit of orange in that thing. Don't mind you the trick. And this is just sap green. Oh, that's nice. And then good old hooker's green. Uh, more sap green. This is sap green deep. And then forest green. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. I mean, these are, they are quite transparent. They're maybe a bit too wet for this paper. I am, I'm using quite a lot of water here though. I'm not being very judicious. What's this turquoise green deep. <gasps> oh, that's a good colour. Oh. I love that colour. I tell you what they remind me of. I've got a little kind of kiddie set of like Koinor kids watercolour paint and it, they're not light fast at all, but the colours are just so punchy and vibrant. I use them quite a lot in my sketchbook because they're just a joy to use. That's a very green green. What's this? Viridian. Mm, it's not a very... It's not a very exciting brilliant. And then this is Malachite. Woo! These colours are so intense. They are beautiful. They're really kind of clear and vibrant. But I really do, I'm looking forward to mixing them up and knocking them back. Horizon Blue. We're onto the blues, people. Oh, it's a nice, nice sky blue. Nice and subtle. Use that really transparent as a lovely kind of sky colour. And this is ultramarine pale, which is that beautiful kind of periwinkle colour again. Oh, it's just stunning. Making a mess over here. Stunning. And then this is turquoise blue. Oh, that's another beautiful colour. It's a proper, proper turquoise. Gorgeous. Ooh. Be lovely with a bit of um, raw umber in it. So I've moved around a little and I've changed brushes. Cerulean blue and then cobalt blue. And ultramarine blue. These are all oh that's a bit deeper. It does make a difference doing this on the cream paper, I have to say. I also I've done a swatch card on the white paper as well, so you can have a look what that looks like. Ooh, that's nice. Is that Prussian blue? Yeah. It's the king of blues. Oh, so good. Oh, this is indigo. Oh, that's rich. I like that. I like that a lot. This is blue gray deep, so like a Payne's gray. That's lovely too. Oh yeah, these are great colours. They've got a real, um, they've got a real purity to them. 
Oh. oh yeah. How can you hate a colour like that? Look how beautiful that is. This is Imperial Violet. Actually, interestingly enough, I've switched to using just a ordinary square brush rather than the water brush and I'm getting much more opacity. They're going down and much thicker and more opaque. Look at the vibrancy of that. Holy mackerel. That's that cobalt violet. Beautiful. This is purple. It's a really lovely red purple. I don't know how much they love this paper, but I think if you're just doing like sketchbook stuff and doing washes and things, then I don't think it matters too much. I tend to have ske several sketchbooks on the go, like all the different papers, so I just kind of mix and match my materials depending on what I'm using and what what I like to use best on, on each different paper. That's lovely, lilac. This is cherry blossom pink, and if I was going to do cherry blossoms, this is exactly the pink I would use. It's quite a kind of sickly, <laughs> sickly bubblegum pink, but it's got, it's got some depth to it, which is nice. They're not like completely flat. Okay, there's some really interesting kind of neutral colours here. So this is rose beige. My water's getting a bit dirty. That's nice. A bit darker than the Royal Talons paper. Brilliant for doing life drawing. Lovely pinky beige. And then here we have more of a yellowy, yellowy beige. Which I think is almost exactly the colour of the Royal Talons paper. That's amazing. Perfect. But if you want to just block something out like very, very, very lightly before you go in and do more. That's a gorgeous yellow ochre. And here we have nice, oh, lovely burnt sienna. I really like these paints. I really, really like them. I'm looking forward to doing some mixes with them and I'm looking forward to actually making uh making a drawing with them but they're really nice to use and i prefer them with just the ordinary brush but rather than the water brush you can see the difference this is going down <gasps> oh look at that color what's that maroon oh that's beautiful these three together are really bringing me joy indian red Oh yes. Oh that's lovely. Oh I am so excited by these colours. There's just this crystal crystal clarity to them which is really beautiful. It's one of my favourites, raw umber. I mix this with so much. It just really works to knock back anything that's like too intense. Um, I'll do some colour mixing with these later and I'll show you what I mean. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful, rich tone. We've got a black. That's a nice black. Nice. Oh, these are lovely. I'm so glad. I was only going to get a tiny little set just to try them out and I mentioned it to Lars and for Christmas he got me this 48, is it 48 set? It's grey, it's a nice cool grey. Prefer warm greys I have to say on the whole but that's it's a nice grey. And then we have white which is probably not going to show up at all on camera and just about see it with my eyeballs that's nice dirty water so again you're not getting pure white <gasps> and then we have the golds oh my goodness 
look at this. And this is white gold, which is very unimpressive on this coloured paper. But it's definitely, it's got like a kind of silver, warm silver sheen to it. You can kind of see it sheening in the light. Bluish gold. Which again, I think is going to suffer for being on this coloured paper. It's pretty good. Not too shabby. There's one more gold and then I'll show you show show you the shimmer. Show me the shimmer. And then this is just this is just gold. No qualifiers, just gold. It's actually I don't know. I feel like it's a bit more maybe bronzy. Let's say this is more of a true gold. It's nice though. And who doesn't love a little bit of shimmer? There you go. If you can see. Woo! Sorry, that's the chair. You can see a little bit of shimmer and shine there. So yes. Those are the Ganzai paints. And if you want to see them on this is on the Royal Talons paper, which is cream. This is what they look like on just plain uh, white paper. This is the, the swatch card that comes in the box. Um, so if you pause the screen, then you can see the colours and the names. I think you can buy most of these pans individually. So there's a particular colour that really captures your attention. Then the, the numbers will be on here. Okay, so I thought I, I've had a bit of a play with the Ganzai paints and coloured paper and all these bits and bobs that we've got and I thought I'd show you what I did before we kind of wrap this up and give you kind of my final conclusion on the, the Ganzai paints. First of all, um, I did these, I did these drawings on the coloured paper and of course they're cats, I mean I can't not draw cats. I'll put the camera overhead so you can have a look. So we've got yellow one. I think this one is my favourite. You might have seen that one on Instagram. This one. <laughs> this one. I love this one too. And then we have an orange one. And this one. This one's Lars's favourite. He really likes the, the giant ear. So yeah, I mean, I, I knew I would love this paper. I love using the Neo Colour on the black paper and this is no different. It's just absolutely, it's a joy to use. And I love, I love how the Neo Colour shows up on the, on the paper. So then I started playing around with the Gansai paints a little bit more. You saw me do um, just these colour swatches and on the on the white paper as well. After I'd done that off camera, I just was playing around with different mixes. So this is just using the Ganzai paints and just with no particular methodology or anything, just messing around, seeing what combinations I could get, just, yeah, one color after another, messing about. And you can see I've got a really lovely range of kind of quite transparent in a lot of cases, but really nice neutral colours. And this again, this is on the Royal Talons Art Creations sketchbook, which has this kind of creamy paper. 
After doing that, I wanted to actually make some, uh, make a drawing with them, make a painting with them, but I don't really like them on this paper, to be honest. So I decided to go into my, what's this, uh, Fabriano uh, sketchbook, which has white paper, sort of thick, bit textured, and I made these fishes. I just had this sketchbook open, just to copy the shapes, just for reference. And yeah. You can see they've come out like really, really beautifully vibrant. Um, colors are lovely. The paint behaves really well. It's like, I mean, I know this sounds dumb, but it's like a thick, opaque watercolor. So not quite as, as thick and jammy as gouache out of a tube, but you can still get quite a lot of opacity out of it. I really like how it behaves on this paper. It really is like you get the looseness and the dribbliness of watercolour, but you still get that kind of opacity and vibrancy of gouache. So I'm calling that a, a very good purchase. I'm really happy with them and I'm sure I'll be using them a lot in my sketchbook. So that's it for this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired you to maybe play with some uh, some more materials, try some new things. And yeah, I will be back next week and I will see you there. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye!